Alright, um... Yeah, three, two, one, go. Well, yeah, time for the zoom. As uh, Sion Ben mentioned, this is the indeed the GameCube version. Most people run it on times for or on PS2. I'm pretty recently. I also uh, got a PS2 copy of the game, found in kind of flip shop <laughs> thing. But I haven't learned it on that console yet, so I'm just doing this right now. It's not like it's like inherently faster on PS2, but the stick, like the iron lock stick, is a bit better than the C stick. Thank you to aim. It's like easier. Well, like, once you get good at it, I'm pretty sure it's a bit easy. So the premise of this game is pretty much the same. Uh, sometimes for this too, it's just a bit more like... Hmm. It just builds a little bit more on. And it's also not as fast. Um, but yeah, you basically just have to... Like in every level, you have to like get a time crystal. That's the story. You have to gather all the time crystals so you can go home and uh, save the world. More on that in time space, you perfect. But in this, aside from just like going to um, picking that up and then going to them, there's also like other additional objectives. Any of the missions. Some people would argue that this is the superior game to Transfer the Future Perfect. And those people would be wrong, so just keep that in mind as I'm playing this video. That Times for the Future Perfect is the superior game to this too. I mean I'm not hating on the game, I love the game. It's pretty good. But Future Perfect is better in pretty much every aspect. The only thing this game has on it is like faster reloads, but that's it. So we're almost done with this level. All I gotta do is uh, blow up and something up, and then escape from it. Into running time splitters, was it just like a old game you decided to pick up? Oh, uh, yeah, I had Future Perfect for a long time when I was a kid, then I decided to speed on it pretty much when I got into it, and then I bought TS2 like two years later, and TS1 also around that time just to play it on, and then I decided to uh, run them too because I figured, you know, why not. I can just make it the entire series. A lot of people used to speed on this, um, all the, the entire series, like... Oh, shit. That was an error on my part. Um, we used to speed on this, like, t 8 to 10 years ago. Mostly IELTS. I'm sure they did, like, the forest wall, but, like, the... This game came out, like... The year 2000, I think, so I'm pretty sure some people did it back then, but now it's in the early days of you know, Sweden and recording and shit, so I don't think there are any like events from those years. Pretty sure most of them came around like 2006, 2008, like that part. But then, like everyone quit. Pretty much. This game has the most active running. Um, next is uh, TS2, or uh, TS1, I mean. And then TS Future Perfect has pretty much only me. But, it's not a bad game. Or a bad series, like the video game series in itself is a masterpiece. Like, a masterpiece. Really good games. Should I need this open? Hold on. That's 
So yeah, even if you don't want to run into uh, cash on you, that's great. And so this uh, thing I did right here, I have to escort this guy back here. So I can buy him stuff. Sorry, I have to redo it. That's uh, error on my part. That's actually not the first time I do that. Because um, the thing it happens because you know the mean from a certain point onwards, like when I talk to this guy Marco, this guy just talked to me, the mission is on the timer, right? And like you come to associate the music with like this like certain parts in the music when to when you're supposed to be opening that door for you. Or something like that. So I just like Oh I hate it again. Oh I'm messing up pretty bad right Yeah I haven't played this anymore. But yeah, this is really just like poor execution on my part. And it's not stuff that should happen. While we're at this, I should say that um, we do time these runs. People in time. And that are automatically invalidates this run because I have them restarting twice. So they don't have to do that. Second time. So yeah. But yeah, since I restarted twice in the entire resets for whatever reason. I don't know, it's fucked up that way. It was up to me when I'm in the time. But they've been doing it for a long time, so. And I was gonna point in changing it. Since you can just not be shit and, you know, do it fine. Normally I'm not this bad, but. It's been a while. I'm not trying to make excuses, but, you know, how it is. We're underestimated either way, right? Or like on our own schedule, like way on the schedule, aren't we? Got a couple of ways to mention shouldn't take much. <laughs> Alright, just to be safe, I'm not gonna shoot him at all this time. It's like I lied. Yeah, we wanna shoot him because... Oh, you know me. No, the reason you want to shoot him is because then he, like, when you, you shoot him, he, like, crashes down. And he plays in the same place. Uh, plays in the same place, and if you don't, you know, like, keep walking into his house, and he'll walk you on the way out, which he did anyway that time. But, yeah, that's why I shot him. It's a bit unfortunate, but that is what it is. Third mode is uh, Notre Dame, Notre Dame. How do you say it? I don't know. I guess it's different from English to English, but. The big fucking like church in France. What you gotta do is you gotta rescue a couple of girls and pretty much. There are summoners in this mission as well, and if you knock their heads off, they die. So I'm gonna try to do that as much as possible. Fortunately, this guy is in the way. Missed him. Yeah, you wanna. <clears throat> And in any of these games, you really don't want to kill any enemies you don't have to, so... Either, like, unless an enemy is, like, directly in front of you, or you'll have to kill it in order to further the game. Like, further the, uh, plot, or further 
girlfriend and never get rid of them. Like when I try to avoid killing them. Especially if that's uh, a waste of time doing so. He left that guy in the middle of the way. That guy is too, but he just can just run straight through and try to kill him. But yeah, I left a bunch of zombies by there because I didn't need to kill them. Hmm. And the reason there's like an orange burning kind of ring around the screen is because I'm on fire. And it's actually okay to be on fire on the easy difficulty. Because if you just do it like the level fast enough, you can do it all of it without the dying from the fire again. So much is it. So here you have to kill eight zombies. Before you can pass on. Or keep going. That's one of the things that's easier on PS2, I think. Because you like the sensitivity smoother. Pretty much. I'm not explaining better than that. So what I do. Since I play in JQ, I just like kind of set like my guns I need to like a particular spot, and then I just like walk into different places to line them up with their heads. Pretty much how, how, how I aim in this game. Since the um, since the need to. This time it's a lot smoother. But yeah, now I just have to kill this boss over here. And then I'm done. Come on, boy. Later. Mm -hmm. So I should say um, playing this isn't easy because it is by and large the uh, fastest category. Not just because enemies have like low self or they're less enemies to kill, but because when you go from easy to normal and hard, there are a lot more objectives in each mission. And it just makes every mission a lot longer. Welcome, friend. Oh, sorry. I just keep muting myself because my cat cries a lot and he's just like all over me. Like, love me! And I'm like, no, nobody needs to hear you cry. <laughs> I want to get a cat, but um, my girlfriend unfortunately is allergic. I I am super allergic, and I can oh. suck it up and I take tons of allergy medicine. And I have asthma, so you would think that like to chew together would be like, no, don't get a cat. But I was like, I saw him, and I was like, no, I have to have him. Sure. He's orange. I'm like a tiger, so I was like, ah, you got me. I used to be allergic actually. But I kind of just like, I don't know, I grew out of it. I used to have a lot of allergies, but I grew out of most of them. Motherfucker stuff. Alright, and so I, since I moved out pretty recently as well, because I was starting to do I started to hey, maybe you can get a cat now. But then, no, my girlfriend's unfortunately allergic, so I decided to punch it. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was another one, but it wasn't. So, unfortunately, I'll have to wait. But if I had a cat, I would just. No, go ahead. I just, I have a lot of allergies, and like, I have guinea pigs too, I have two of them, and like, I never used to be allergic to them, but now, like, I've developed an allergy, like, holding <laughs> them, making them break out hives and stuff, so like, yeah. I still play with them and stuff, and I just, I just take some allergy medicine, so like, I just sound like a stone rather than that now. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it happens, sometimes it's just gotta, you gotta roll with what you don't. I was watching, I got a really short haired cat, but his hair doesn't fly everywhere, so it makes it a little easier. Mm. I mean, I, I guess I could get one of those, like, naked, is that what they're called? Naked cats? Naked cats? Chinese cats? Whatever. Those ones? They don't have any hairs? Yeah. But, okay, yeah. I'm not too up to speed with cat names, but 
But I heard those are really expensive, really, like really, really expensive. Yeah, they are, and they're like really high maintenance, and like you have to be really careful because like because of like their genetics and stuff, and like. Mm -hmm. During the winter, you have to put, like, make sure your house is really warm and put sweaters on them and stuff because they can't naturally keep warm. It's oh, yeah. like, it's a lot of work. It's, I guess it's kind of like if you would get, like, a pug or some other, like, a chihuahua, I guess. Mm. Kind of equivalent to work. Oh, so chihuahuas need, like, extra, like, sweaters and stuff, too? No. No, they don't. See, so, yeah, I thought, like, chihuahua, like, people would. Chihuahuas only put sweat on them because they're like rich and famous. Or like rich mainly. And they want to like. No, it's, it's just because it can't hold body heat. <laughs> yeah, just want to make their chihuahuas look pretty. Oh, we're obsessed with clothes. So, um, the thing about those missions is uh, you have to wait for like two minutes. Kind of like in the second mission where I kept messing up. We have to escort the guy to his house. But in this mission, you just have to wait for the girl who's on the beginning to open up the door. And yeah, you can't speed that up in any way, shape, or form. So you just have to wait for her to, and not get seen. That was like two and a half minutes in the middle of the run, where you just wait. Yeah, so you just sit there? No, yeah, pretty much. Oh, sit, man, that's, go to that's the bathroom. Kind of like go to the bathroom or something. Pretty much, yeah. Um, did you watch any ESA this year? Uh, I watched a little bit of it, but. Um... Like I said, my internet's kind of crappy, so yeah, yeah. I just watch whenever, you know, the weather was good. Mm -hmm. No, I did this run uh, there too, and what I did during this thing, like when this happened, is I told pretty much everyone, I don't smoke, but I told everyone that I need to, uh, like, go, like, I need, I was kind of jonesing for nicotine, I didn't go vape, pretty much. So I just left yeah. the stream without telling them that this was actually happening, so, pretty funny. I'll have to go back and talk for a while. Yeah, you could. I might have actually watched that, I'm not sure. Mm, that was pretty funny, because chat pretty much went bananas. Yeah. It's coming up pretty soon, though. Oh, yeah. You, feel like you can see her on the off screen now, the red dot, that's her. I guess you'll see it soon, but yeah, you just have to wait for it. I'm probably not going to see it, I'm like, I'm uh, <laughs> color sight impaired, so I don't really see, see much. Oh. Yeah, I'm like just racking up, the, uh, racking up the illnesses and stuff, I guess. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, that's a blinking red thing, so I'm sure. You should see it, even if you can see the color. Oh, if it's blinking, then yeah. Yeah, it's blinking there. I know you just have to sneak behind her pretty much. Is, uh, is easy the only difficulty you run? I, yeah, it's the only difficulty I run for this game. But I don't think anyone else does full game runs of it either, but some guy did well with it actually. He has like done both easy and hard like every aisle, I'm pretty sure. That's videos of it. So, if he does every individual level, why doesn't he just sit down and play the whole game? Uh, because... Um, is it like ridiculously long? No, not playing. He, uh... It's pretty much because he just... It's kind of like this was part of, um... This game was part of the Unity you know, Elite with Goldmine and Perfector. Like the site, the Elite of Nick. You know, Gold and I, they always do this up the right? Pretty much. They have like a million IL runners in like perfect time. Yeah. This is kind of like, it's kind of had that situation with it, where like, the past people were all day would do it with IL. Um, he's the, I guess, the oldest still active runner of the game. That's pretty much all he did back then, I guess. And it didn't really start doing full game runs until other people started doing it. I guess it would be easier to just sit down and do like five to ten minutes of a level than sit down and do like, you know, an hour, forty-five minutes. Like mm -hmm. I don't have the patience to just sit and master individual levels. Like I have to learn the whole thing and nothing else. Mm -hmm. But no, he's really he's really good at the game. And yeah. I can imagine I've seen some individual levels in other games I've run, like 
uh, crash through your Spyro, and I'm just Proof. like, I can never be that good. <laughs> Proof. No, it is really good. I haven't done any IELTS so for this, aside from like when learning it, but I don't find any of it. That's a good thing about TS1, it just like tracks your level, your level time immediately, like after you finish. The level is just says on the end screen what time you got. But that's the same guy, yes, so uh, he's the one, he has videos on YouTube, and that's how I le learned the uh, straight thing. So yeah, he's done a lot of work for uh, the first three games. He played that for the three as well, but he doesn't run it aside from some like individual levels, I guess. Oh yeah, speedrun is definitely like the instrument. In the recent years. Sure you have Isles on a shell, especially for Goldeneye. But not as much focus on it, I would say. And Goldeneye is pretty much the only game where it gets any public chance as well. Yeah, I should suffer Goldeneye all the time. Like, yeah. Like, like browsing through the screen on my phone and stuff like that. And all the time, like, wow, that is a lot. Or like, Google speed running, like that comes up. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like, like, I'm sure we all know speed's on top, right? Buying lots of speed's on top. That's like, that's the best of I think. See the guy in the back there. I have to kill him before I can finish the level. And you can't tell him as he's on side of the house up there. But I didn't manage to do it. It's not really that hard, I was just aiming too hard. And that costs you like. I mean, I was slow even after just killing him, so it cost me a bit of time, but. Hmm. Okay, dude. Wait. My favorite one is uh, Time Story 6 for third game. So that's the yeah, one. I, I didn't play these as a kid, but like everybody else I knew did, and I'm just like, where was I during this time? Yeah. Well, no, that's the only one I go play as a kid. These others were I just bought, like only bought after like, they grew up. So yeah, that's the one I brand the most and the one like I spent the most time on overall. These are not guys are not cooperating with these very well enough. Then there's like a cooldown period where you can't pick it up for like 3 seconds.
this uh, this door behind me here, and that's like the private center for the one we just talked about. With an NTSC console, you save a lot of time here. This way, this door opening a lot faster. the RNG, or I should say, yeah, I guess RNG, like the worst luck you can have, like most of the bad luck is this, it's just, in these games it's just like enemies being in bad positions, like this kind of, sometimes enemies will jump out to block you, and sometimes they'll stand like further apart, and that'll just mess you up. There's some pretty uh, crucial enemies here, like any decisions and movement that you need here. In this mission, where bad luck will really like slow you down, because by the end of this level there are like a bunch of stone golems, and the only way to get rid of them, well, you have to get rid of them first, of, get rid of them first of all, in order to be able to beat the mission. And the only way to do so is to lure them into trap doors, and sometimes it will just like stop and pound the ground for no reason. And that kind of ruins your like setup. So sometimes it's ruined multiple times, and it's, I don't know, it's just uh, it's pretty weird. But you're not supposed to like come the ground until they like are up close to you. Try to actually attack you, but they only do it like for no reason. And this guy will not attack on there. I have to kill any of these monkeys, I just do it because they're annoying. And it doesn't cost me any time, so I just you know, try to get rid of as many as possible. Kill the animals. But this is the stone balance, and first one works well. This guy actually just have to lure him onto this chapter. Oh, he, uh, not like that, but it didn't really cost me any time. He's supposed to step on the thing himself and then... Well, this guy didn't get on it. Stop him. Oh, come on. Wait. Oh, there it is. Wasn't how I meant to do it, but it worked out. But that's a small, like, time loss. Uh, Mexican Mission, that's the best level actually in Times for the Future. I don't know if it's in this because I haven't played this multiplayer, but Mexican Mission is the best level. Steal at Stealing Bread. So, just so you know how well oh, I was man, talking I, to you. I must have missed out on the good time because I've, I've, never, I've never played this game like outside of like, you know, being a teenager and an adult. Hmm? This is, uh, I, yeah, I have next to play this one in multiplayer. So I don't know if I love next to next in this game. But it isn't super perfect. Hell yeah, dude. Other fun levels in, uh, include this crawl, Siberia, and uh, Chinese. That's a pretty funny thing they did. Uh, the Chinese level that I just played through on uh, 
to use one, the one that I die twice on. The yeah, actual could start as a multiple eleven in tension. Science for this uh, two and three. Which is pretty cool, I think. Stop, dude, what the hell? No lock blocking me. I got a bit unlucky there, but uh, you have to kill spore specific enemies before uh, that door will open. I like to place the bar to move here. And you really don't want any other enemies to be in there while well, you try to do that because then we'll just. I'm kind of fuck you up. But yeah, ask Brady saying this is a really good thing. I invited a friend over a few days back to play with this game with me. And we play like four levels. And then he said that he had to go home because he wanted to go to bed. But like when I asked him about it like three days later, he said, no, I don't want to play that. That game is boring. Yep. Kind of, you know, kind of. Maybe a bit upset, but you know, you know how it is. Oh man, it's had a real strain on your friendship there, dude. Yeah. Love it. I'm only grabbing the gist of how you really play the game because you're going so fast, but I think I would still enjoy this casually. Oh, it's a really good game. That could have been a lot faster as well. There's apparently one guy left. There he is. Uh, when I run this game, I have a setting called auto aim on. Actually, hold on. Oh. That explains a lot. Oh, uh, I turned it off. So, shouldn't have done that. And it doesn't really matter that much now, I guess, but. Yeah, you really want the setting on. Especially once you're used to it. Because what I do there is I rely on auto aim a lot just to like put the laser beams like where it'll kill them. And since I had that off, it took a lot of time. Away. Which also explains why I didn't uh, kill the boss quick in the 6th level 1 list. I thought I was aiming too high, but it seems like it, I was just auto aim was off. So. Oh, my alarm is ringing. Hold on, let me go turn it off real quick. Oh, it's 16 minutes. Hold on, yeah, sorry. I wanted you were paying a big the alarm. It's the default alarm. I just had it for all of them. And I think I have like six more coming up, so I'm going to try to turn those off real quick. There we go. This is the final level. So by the end of this, I am going to go into a spaceship, and that's when the level on. So I'll let you know on time. Okay. Or bread, I guess. Yeah, he's listening to. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll let bread know. That's uh, it's not what I did, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the phone was at charging at the end of the room, or I should say the end of the house, 
the other apartment in my house, it's where my apartment is actually with this one room. Studio apartment. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, my phone was dying earlier, and I used to check audio, so I had to like run in here, grab my charger before it died. Mm. But no, I was in the other room. Wow. Oh, I don't have the call at all now, okay. So what I have to do now is, uh, before I can escape this space, I have to shoot down incoming enemy ships. And why you're hearing all this noise is because when there's no air, humans can't breathe, right? So I'm currently in space and in vacuum. But because, again, this one each is similar to the, like, the whole fire, come on, the whole, like, fire situation with them. Because it's uneasy, I can survive out here long enough in order to not die. So the sound itself is pretty good. Come on, boy. Hmm. Oh, I missed it. Something. Yeah, I want all from the thing, pretty much. How did this guy get in here? That's not supposed to happen. But yeah, all I gotta do now. No, I'm fine. So, does this shift come in like the same spot every time? Yeah, there's a pattern to it. Oh man, that's awesome. So, it's three from the left, three from the like, middle, three from the left, three from the middle, three from the right, three from the other left, one from the middle, and one from the left. That's really precise, and I am, I am really amazing. <laughs> you can remember all of that. Uh, I mean, you can use it once it's, uh, not the same anymore. I'm gonna do a trick real quick. That was home pretty recently actually. But time is coming up. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna stand on top of the elevator and then I'm gonna like jump off at a certain point. And that takes time. There it is. So now I'm on top of it. And I'm gonna jump off soon. Hold on. I get up here and I press A. If I die, I think that's only the second time this has happened. Sure. Yeah, that is actually a first, kind of like a complete first thing. That's, uh, mm. Once I learned that trick, I never filmed it before. And I'm pretty sure I did it right. So it might have, I don't know, been a health thing. I really don't know how I died. Oh, whatever. He's showing us a chain right there. So yeah, time isn't coming up quite yet. We'll get to more of the, uh, the grunting and all that. That was really unfortunate too, because it happened like by the end of the run. And like... Five more seconds and the run would have been over. So. That's so okay. Yeah, hey, more of this. Yeah, also, you know. So three from here. No, three from the left. Three from the middle. There are these enemies come out too, yeah, so you gotta come on. So three from here. Three from down here, like the middle. And you can tell pretty much where you need to aim to because of the stars. Like these two. And three from up here. Maybe from down here. 
one from right here. Okay, right here. And then the last one from here. So that's 20 in total. And so, uh, this pattern only holds if you don't miss anyone. Hold on. <coughs> Sorry. Hold on. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know where that came from. I'm just hoping I don't die in this actual video, man. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. But yeah, as I was saying, um, uh, with the uh, ships. They only like stay into the same pattern if you don't miss any. If you do, there might be more rounds of ships, or there might be like more ships in the rounds. Does that make sense? Hopefully, this should end up. See if I can do it properly, because if I don't, I'm mercy killing this. Just so you know. There you go, that's how you do it. I think I just have to load up, and time's not up right now, time. So that is, uh, train wreck pretty much, but. That is what it is. Oh man, it could be like my uh, my X4 run during spring, but I went like 20 minutes over estimate and still didn't finish the run. <laughs> Dang. But yeah, I was just unprepared, I guess. That's why uh, I didn't do it too well. Let's check the game time real quick, I guess. Oh, some of the screen's actually missing. Hmm. Oh, that's fine, actually. See here, and not preferences, but uh, statistics. Oh, that's a really bad time, actually. But, hey, it is what it is. We were ahead of schedule by, like, 